All right, today we're going to show you how to do drum replacement in Studio One. So if you want to bring in your favorite samples to either replace or enhance your drum parts, it's real quick and easy in Studio One. Today we're going to show you how to use the Bend tool, which allows us to isolate out the transients, which alleviates the need to do a lot of editing and deleting. Whether you have a full drum loop and you need to just isolate out the kicks and snares, like this loop up here in red, if we convert all of that into MIDI, then all of those instruments are gonna have MIDI data. And that's why we'll be using the Bend tool. It's a really awesome feature in Studio One and it makes converting audio to MIDI very, very easy and it makes drum replacement very easy. So let's get on into it. So the first thing I like to do is to go ahead and duplicate this track and tuck one away for a backup. So if I right click and hit duplicate track complete, and now I'm going to change the color of my original hit mute, and we'll just tuck that away and save it. So we'll be working with the duplicate track here in purple. Now a quick little tip here, if I right click on this duplicate track and go down to bounce selection and click that, Nothing changes except the little title here. Now it says drums instead of the name of the original loop. And I'll explain why I did that in a second. So let's start with the snare drum. Now we need to convert this drum loop into MIDI and we wanna isolate out just the snare drum into MIDI triggers that we can then drag in our snare sample. That way we can have a different sounding snare on top of the one that's in this loop so we can layer it and get the sound that we want. So we click on our purple drum loop track here, so it's highlighted. And then if you go up here and hover over this little tool, it says audio bend. And we click that, and the little audio bend menu drops down here. The two crucial parameters in here is this one that says strength, which is at 0%, and threshold, which is at 0%, which is a good starting spot, and that's the default. And those are what we're gonna use to isolate out our transients. And now over here, we're gonna click apply, and you'll see these little blue lines that formed now in the audio file right where all the transients are. The reason we bounced the selection is because Studio One likes to apply this to both our duplicate and the one that we're working with. And if you just bounce the selection down, then it will just recognize the one that's highlighted. If you don't, it'll recognize them both because they're identical. So just a little tip for you there. But now what you'll see is down here at the bottom, we have these blue lines at all of the transients. And as I play through, you'll see that there is a blue line on every kick and every snare. And that choppiness will go away. That's just because we're in audio bend mode. But so what we wanna do is isolate out just the snare. Now up here where it says threshold, above that is the bend marker, which is in lock. And if I hit restore, it unlocks that and you'll see that the threshold is at 80%. And this is all just by default. So when you do this, it'll do the same thing. Now, if I grab the threshold and start to drop it down, watch what happens to the blue lines. I get to about there and these blue lines on the kick drum have gone away. And now the blue lines are only on the snare. So this is like the sensitivity for detecting transients. And since the snare is the loudest transient, by lowering the threshold, now we have blue lines only on the snare, very easy. But you'll see now that I have the threshold down to 11%, it's not detecting this one right here. So I bring that back up and then that comes back. I also have a snare up here that's not being detected. Bring that back up and now I have a couple kick drums that are in there. So this is where you just adjust the threshold until you have just what you want or get it as best as you can. And this is because of the strength of the transients. Some of the kicks are almost as loud as some of the snares. So if I drop it down here to 50%, now I just have snares and maybe one or two kicks. And here at the end, And I'm not picking up this snare hit right here. And now up next to the audio bend tool is one that just says bend tool. And if I click on that, then I can go in and click on the snares that it's not detecting. And it will add those lines for me where I need them. So now I have all the snares detected. I had to add in a few by hand because the threshold sensitivity just isn't quite good enough to isolate them out, but that's no problem. And if I do get an extra kick or two, it'll be really easy to delete. 
So now what you do is you just drag this track, which is an audio track, down to a blank instrument track. And in Studio One, there's no designation for MIDI tracks. Those are just all part of being an instrument track. So if I just drag this down, it automatically converts this into MIDI data. You can see the green ones are the kicks that we have picked up. And no problem, right here is an erase tool and we can just go ahead and delete these kicks. And if you were doing this on a whole song, you could just go in and highlight all of them by holding down shift with the arrow key, highlight all of them real quick, and then just right click and cut those out. But very easy to delete out these kicks here. And there we are, that is the MIDI data for all of the snares. And depending on your drum loop, it may be very easy to dial in the threshold so it only grabs the snares, but you just get it as best as you can. If you have a few kicks or other high transient instruments, it's no problem. You just clean it up real quick, but this saves you a lot of time. And you'll also notice down here on the bottom where the velocity information is, it has not only copied the snare information, it has also copied the volume. So the same volume of the snare hits and the waveform are now down here in MIDI information, which is handy because then the hits will be identical, but also if we want to adjust it further, we can. And now what I'm going to do is mute our duplicate and unmute our original. Let's take a listen to our original. And now we can go ahead and bring in a snare sample onto our new track here in blue, the MIDI information, and start to layer our snare drum and get it to sound more the way we want. So Studio One comes with a really good drum sample tool. If I open up the browse window here and go to instruments, and I can simply drag impact into our new channel here. And now here's impact. And this one is defaulting to a blank slate. And there's all these kits that come with it. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this one that has a snare sample that I kind of like. There's a couple in here we could go with, but we're going to try this one to see what happens. Now, you'll notice here that this one is it's C sharp 2. And you could drag these around and rearrange them, but we'll stick with that. And you'll notice that all of my snare hits in the MIDI data down here at the bottom are at C3. So we will simply highlight all of our snare hits and right click and go to transpose. And then at transpose, we could type in C sharp two and hit okay. And it moved all of our MIDI data to C sharp two, which is where the snare is that we want on impact. Let's take a listen. And we have one kick down here at the very beginning that we didn't get. So we'll just go in with our erase tool and get rid of that and take a listen. All right, and I'll mute the new snare that we just brought in so we can hear the original. And our new snare back in with it. Fantastic. And now what we can do is if we want to layer the snare and have multiple samples to blend in, we can simply right click on our new track here, the blue one, and we could duplicate track complete again. And then we could bring in another instance of impact into this channel and bring up the drums that we want. And if we wanted to, now we could blend in this snare and we could do the same thing. We could go into the MIDI data, select those snares and transpose them to F sharp two or whatever it is that we wanna do. And you could do this as many times as you wanted and you could have perfect snare layers of as many snares as you want to blend in to the original and they'll all have their own track. So you can process them all, compress them, EQ them, whatever you want independently. And we can also highlight all of these snares and then grab the velocity and drag it down. And we could do the same in this other one. And blend these in a little better. Let's take a listen. And then we could go back and do the same thing with the kick and just isolate out the kick and start layering in kick drum samples but it's really that easy. And then at the end of the day, I don't actually need this track here anymore. I could restore this, but that's another reason that I save a backup. But if you had all of the drums recorded individually and you just wanted to replace the snare, you could use the exact same technique to eliminate the bleed over into the snare mics. 
So where we started with the full kit, if that was just a snare track, say we were just listening to the top snare mic, you would use the same audio bend tool and adjust the threshold to have it only detect the snare. So when you transfer it to MIDI data, you don't have the overheads or the hi-hat registering in the MIDI data. So this works the same way, whether it's a full loop or you're just trying to isolate your snare from one microphone. It's the same technique, no matter which way you're approaching it. But after you have the MIDI data adjusted the way you want it, you can just right click and go to transform to audio track, hit OK. And now we have an audio track of our new snare sample. And we could do that for all of our snare samples and then we would have new audio waveforms for every snare from every sample that's perfectly layered in with our original groove. And it's that simple. But there you go, whether you're using a full drum loop or you have a microphone for one snare and you need to isolate out the bleed so you're not hearing any of the other information, you use that audio bend tool and adjust the transient detection and it's very quick and easy. And then you can start layering your samples and do your drum replacement. So I hope you liked that. Hope you got a lot out of it. Enjoy playing around with your drum samples and doing your layering and I catch you on the next one.